Okay, I want to call the Huffington Town Council meeting of October 17, 2016 to order with a moment of silent meditation and salute to the fire.
time review committee meeting. Uh, we had what we think to be our last uh, meeting for the Waterview Review Committee. Uh, they've really done an excellent job. Uh, basically, we went before them, uh, hopefully for the final time, to uh, review all the documents, uh, review the proposed ordinance, and get the green light uh, to move forward. Uh, we were successful in doing that. And then last week, we mailed uh, letters to the 50 borderline users, uh, the property owners notifying them that within the months of De November and December, uh, we're going to be uh, installing, removing the old meters, installing the new meters uh, at no cost to the uh, homeowner. So those letters went out. We already got three calls uh, scheduled beginning in late October. And hopefully, uh, the, everybody will cooperate on a mutual date and time to remove the old ones and put in the new ones. And then July 1st, we're going to switch that over to, the game plan is to switch it over to a quarterly billing period, which would be better for the, the people and the town, it'll improve the town's cash flow, and those bills will uh, be a little smaller. So. Uh, <clears throat> I'm also pleased to announce that during the last several weeks, the town has received some uh, additional grants. In addition to the $400,000 grant from DEM, Langworthy Field and a $100,000 grant from DEM uh, for the land trust. We received a $10,000 grant from the Rana Foundation for the construction of a gazebo at the Crandall House, and that was constructed and delivered on October 12th. A special thanks to uh, Recreation Director Mary Sawyer for the work on the project. She really did a good job, and we included a color photograph of the uh, gazebo. We also received uh, two $25,000 grants from Brown EMA. Uh, the first was to hire an outside consultant to prepare emergency action plans for several high and significant hazard dams in Hockington. And a special thanks to uh, EMA Director Ron McDonald for preparing and submitting this grant request. Well, he submitted this for the last two or three years, and uh, we finally got it this year. We also received a $25,000 grant from EMA to update the town's hazardous mitigation uh, plan that's already almost five years old. And uh, that, that grant request was uh, thanks to Planner Jim Lamphere uh, for preparing and submitting that grant. We also got a grant for about $5,500 from our EMA to offset 50% of the cost of the $10,000 stipend for our EMA director. Uh, October 13th, I responded to Wednesday's <coughs> bakery and met with the Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee and other, several other residents and business owners and his staff as part of the Lieutenant Governor's 39 cups of coffee for the small business. Uh, he was very amenable, very reachable, and a lot of people had a lot of nice things to say about him. So. Uh, lastly, uh, on October 13th, uh, my assistant Courtney Highland and I met with engineer Tony Nina and discuss the status of the town's wetlands permit application that's currently pending before around the DEM uh, regarding the possible future consolidation of offices and expansion of town hall. Uh, we were under a, a deadline to submit that paperwork, that application for the wetlands permit. Uh, we got that in on time, and, and now uh, we're just negotiating with DEM uh, so that they're satisfied, satisfied with the final results. But whatever happens, at least we're grandfathered in. Any questions for the Bill, as far as the retention ponds go, is it the town, or is it my understanding that the town is taking over the maintenance of these retention ponds? And are they completely throughout town that we're doing this? Or is it just Beachwood Estates? No, it's can, throughout the complete town. Does the planning board know that? And the zoning board know that we're going to be doing that? Because maybe if we do any other subdivisions, there may be, need to be provisions put in there. Maybe the solicitor can address that question. Yeah, so we, um, right now we're just focusing on Beachwoods because it's kind of an unusual situation. There's three detention ponds there. Two of them are uh, part of the open space owned by the residents. Third one, 25% of, of it is common space owned by the residents, and one resident owns 75% of it. So that's the trickiest one to kind of maneuver around. We're trying to um, 
look at a policy where the town takes responsibility for uh, detention fund maintenance in a uniform way throughout the town. This is just like a first step toward that idea uh, that we're, we're looking into and trying. And this happens to be the one that's more complicated because of that one one homeowner's ownership of 75% of one of the detention ponds. But it's a situation where the Beachwoods, where the, um, the developer's involvement in the development is coming to an end. Um, if the new homeowners association doesn't take over, uh, no one is going to be looking at any of this uh, maintenance of detention ponds or similar type issues. So um, the idea is to get these addressed for this development first and then see where we are relative to other uh, <coughs> subdivisions and detention funds throughout the town. So what you're saying is this is something new that the town is just starting to do, is to take over these detention funds. Well, the town already it is responsible for, for most of them, at least that's my understanding. And there's a couple of exceptions here and there. This Beachwoods is a big chunk of that. Uh, and then, you know, then we're going to look at the next one or two that might be involved. But that's it, the idea is to get this whole thing under under control and subject to the same type of procedures because it, in the end it's a it's like a safety health and safety issue. Okay, I didn't, I thought they belonged to the uh, yeah. I thought every also use within the within the the development that there's a detention pond. I was under the understanding that there was the homeowners association's responsibility to maintain that. Now that the town's taking that over, I mean that's just another burden on our, our, our highway department. Yeah, yeah, I think Tom, to answer your point, I think you guys can correct me. Is, is it where the water runoff from a town road goes into some part yes. of that long drain? Mm -hmm. drain and then, then, it, yeah. then it reverts to the town's responsibility. That's kind yeah, of the, 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 I guess. There's a subdivision regulation that, see, here's one of the problems. Back in the early 2000s, uh, they were not uniform policies in place as to who would be responsible for these detention ponds that handle the runoff of stormwater from public roads, town roads. Uh, so this one in particular, Beachwoods, um, as, you, as you just suggested, uh, the private paperwork governing the law of that subdivision at that time um, called for the Homeowners Association to be responsible for the maintenance of the detention ponds. Board. But that was actually contrary to the existing zoning regulations on file with the town, dating back to 1995. So we're in the situation now with Beachwoods where uh, the developer is transitioning out. Uh, no plans uh, appeared, appeared, I'm using the past tense, to be in place to address, okay, if the homeowners association goes away because the developer controls it, now who's going to do the detention? There's no structure in place. So those are part of the complicating issues that prompted different people within the town, particularly uh, Bill, Bill's office and Jim uh, Lampier's office, uh, and, and to some extent the council uh, president, to kind of start looking at this and see if we can solve or address, help address the problem before it becomes a crisis. So that's kind of what we're doing, and the focus has really has been just on Beachwoods now, because that really has a lot of these tricky issues that need to be addressed. So that's kind of a long-winded answer to your question. But, okay. I think it's also important, <coughs> I agree with you, but I, I think it's also important to note that out of the 22 detention pods uh, in town, 16 of them are currently maintained by DPW, and we have, uh, we have uh, easements on each one of those 16. We're just trying to level the playing field. That's excellent. I think that's really useful too. I think it's better for health and safety and for consistency and efficiency, especially in case of stormwater runoff and have a major storm. The reason I ask is because I was at the zoning board of planning board meetings when I heard this, and that's why I was just under the understanding that it was all taken care of. Okay. okay. I didn't realize there was one. Yes. Uh, Bill, and, and this is Turkey. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Scott, yes. did they have a Bismarck? Mm -hmm. Did they? Do you know if they did? Because I, I was talking to Colleen, no Colleen West. I'm not sure what Bismarck is. Oh, no! Oh, you're getting a Bismarck. I'm only to tell 
health manager. Oh, man. Is that what it is, Marcus? Wow. You know, oh. He's a healthy guy. Too. Oh, that's, 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 okay. that's what it is. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll do that. 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 i Rise School Building Committee. We still have Michael Russo, the chairperson. Hi, everyone. Hey. Students, I know we're all very familiar with. to ask for your support 
in forming a building committee to then carry out the recommendation to task force. So no surprises there, right? But that's what we ended up working on. So the building committee formed with unanimous support from the three town councils, as well as a special meeting of the, of the voters. And Hopkinton, we had to have a quorum of 25, and we nearly doubled that that night. Um, we had nearly 50 people in the audience from Hopkinton, and they all unanimously supported um, moving the building committee, uh, letting the building committee form, and providing the building committee with um, funds in order to distribute information to the public. So at that point, we came back to you. Um, the three town council presidents worked so hard. Um, they were devoted to trying to make sure that prior to coming to you with the resolution to bring forward to the state, that we had agreement with all three towns and how we would be paying for the share that the state was not going to pay for. Um, so again, all that work was done prior to coming to you, and gratefully, you unanimously supported us moving forward in the state legislation. Senator Morgan was one of the people who sponsored the legislation up at the state house. Um, she, I was there. She, stood, she spoke for it. Um, and Rai reviewed all of the data, all the circumstances, all the information, as well as the state. And they both, simultaneously, on independent tracks, approved both the, uh, the schematics of the building and the funding, while the state house was supporting um, the bond to go to the voters. So that's where we are now. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. You guys remember all this, right? <laughs> a few times. Okay. Everyone understands the financial impact of the trail. Right? So we've talked about that several times. I think that um, although we all in our, most of us realize that there's an issue of equity for the students in the RISE facility, beyond that, there are some real issues with the tax base paying for these trailers that are um, falling apart. And in fact, RISE, named this project here number one in the state in terms of need based on the fact, yes, that it was inequitable to the surrounding buildings, but mostly to the point that it was a leased property for a permanent program. And for that reason, they're going to give us 61%. And now I'm going to correct something that I've been saying. I've been using the word reimbursement, that RISE is going to reimburse us 61%. And actually, at the Richmond Town Council meeting, I learned something new, or a better clarifying point, that is a little bit better than a reimbursement. Because a reimbursement seems to imply that we're going to pay the money and then get some money back from Ride. It's actually more of a cost share. So Ride is going to pay the 61% directly to the bottom of it. And then we're going to pay the 39%. So I should have been using the word cost share all along, but reimbursement is the term that's used by the state as well. But I just wanted to offer that clarification because I, I, that kind of have been uh, made things a bit more clear to me that no point will we be having to wait for RIDE to pay us back any money. All right, so the lease is ending on the trailers in May of 2017. Um, as we know, there's no state reimbursement for those trailers. At this point, they're costing about $110,000 a year. They'll cost much more if replaced. Uh, if the voters choose to approve question eight, um, it'll be roughly $5.2 million, the 61% cost share by ride, and the three towns are going to share the remaining cost evenly. And again, thank you to the town council presidents for um, working on that with us. Any questions on that? The audience today doesn't know, I don't think. Sharon, are we good? <coughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah. So, question nine is the total cost, which is 5.2, 5 5 5.9. So, the bond, we cannot exceed $6 million, but RIDE will reimburse us 61% of $5.2 million. So, the building committee intends uh, at financing the project at roughly $5.2 Right, and what is the cost that the three towns will also Well, it's the so I, I know, I know this. Are you asking me to find the percent? Yeah, well, we're going to let Frank use his calculator and his banker. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2028. 
took the time to tour the Rise building a few weeks ago. She also heard this concern from the same group of people. Um, she took it quite seriously. Uh, I commend her for that. She went to the Rise building. She toured the building. She met with the director. She asked the questions. Um, she looked at the, the spacing. And um, hopefully she too came away with the you know, accurate information. Um, and I, I do appreciate and commend her for taking the time to do that. As elected officials, I feel like that's what we have to do. Okay. So I'm going to actually pass this over to Fred Stanley. Um, and he can probably have to answer a few more can questions. Can I ask you a question that, um, before, anything. before you and start? I'll say as long as you want. <laughs> um, my understanding, and I haven't had time to read what you handed out tonight, but my understanding is that there was, if I can say a bubble. I'm not an environmentalist. Uh, you know, I don't have any degrees in that. But I understand there's uh, perhaps 20,000 gallons, they estimate, and it's, quote, under the middle school, which is why the issue of where is that oil going, which way is it flowing, <coughs> putting a building, are you going to dig into the dirt or not? And you and you reassured us, um, and DEM was the agency that should have a problem with this, and I would think Fred would know a lot about that. So um, so my understanding is that there is a bubble underneath, and it's just, it's under the other, it is, it is they think, going to move to the south if it ever moves, and they're trying to, they've got dispersants in it that they use, and they get a certain amount, I don't know if it's every month, but they get a certain amount out of oil um, out of the ground, and they can estimate what's left. But I got the impression that there was just this bubble under there, and it was pretty much not going anywhere, it just wanted to stay there. Is that your recollection? Um, so I, again, the, the PowerPoint, I agree with you, Sylvia, that neither of us, I think, are, um, are ones that can speak to that granular level of detail, but certainly the PowerPoint from GCA that was presented to the school community and public in April, um, and then there's a copy there. I would defer to the experts, and if DEM and GCA say that um, it's not an issue mm -hmm. in their language, um, as an elected official, that's an yeah, and I understand that. Uh, I'm certainly not willing to interpret the Yeah, and this building is the not going to go, it's just not going into the earth. It's going to be built on a slab. Correct. Yeah. Right? Well, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let me go back a little ways. You're talking about the pool. Uh, I was in on the Richmond situation. I was a key witness on that since 1969 until the water system went in the 80s. The foam went from mobile, went around the strip with, and took in and didn't get to the river before they caught it and they started drawing it back. They drew the whole thing back. This situation over here, and we weren't really in on it because it wasn't above ground leak, it was an in-ground leak. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I was concerned about when I talked to them was the wells and so forth, the chair off. I was informed at the time that just to give you some sense of direction, switch road runs south and north, and then they run east and west. Run south and north. The school runs south and north. The leak was on the south end of the school, and at the time I was notified that the film was headed towards south, which would run towards Route 91 with the fallen fire station. I think they got in soon enough to keep that film back, and I don't know if there's 20,000 gallons there now because they've been pumping it out for how many years now that they've been put into it. So I wouldn't say there's 20,000 gallons. But the thing that we were concerned about is we put through classrooms within 30 feet of the oil tanks right now. They were just added a few years ago. And the big fact is, where is this? People, where are these people complaining now when the well water that supplied that school, two wells were drilled there in 1987. They were good wells, they were made so that we could put on the fire protection. Matter of fact, they were so good that the contractors had a fight there. Man two inch and a half lines in the school and flooded the school before it opened. <laughs> and that's where it's going to damage the middle school. Those wells are on the northwest end of the school. Okay. Why aren't they complaining with the, with the wells? Those same wells cover Career and Tech. Career and Tech, if you remember, before we got turned over to the Cherubal, the state came to Terrible and asked to use water. There was a swap off, the drinking water went over the well in the cellar or the basement at Vocational School is now being used to keep the fire system pump. I mean the tanks, the 52,000 gallons of water we got in the ground. Keep it level all the time for uh, uh, evaporation and uh, minor testing, anything other than that, we'd have to go over top it off and get that drinking tank. And that well was used for that drinking water supply both vocational school and middle school. Where are these people? 
Now they're worried about the damn mission, affecting the pool. We've got all these kids in that school drinking the water. And not one time have I seen Bailey or Georgia or any of them coming out and saying, gee, we could please put in the vault. They're only worried about this because they can't win any other way. So now they're turning around and trying to say this boom is moving that way, which it isn't. So we've got all the letters and facts. I hope you support us and get away from some of these lies and falsehoods that's being put out there. I've always represented this town and this town originally 90%, and I still do. I'm glad you could be on the committee. Fred, I had a quick question for Fred. Fred, Fred, Fred. The plume. I guess my question is, why can't if they're taking a little bit out at a time, why can't they just take it all off? It's a, there's a system to it. Oh, it's if you it's remember right for the building, the winter building right next to the mobile for the years. And what they were doing is they were pulling all that fuel back, and I guess it's probably easier with the gasoline. Fortunately, it didn't get into the pond, but followed. We had all the ge geographical maps showing where the ledges were, and it didn't go towards the pond, it went the other way. Yeah. Just caught Canal Park and it swung around. As a matter of fact, I, I was on Terry, the Terry Reed around 60 minutes. And the, uh, right. So guy. they have to do it a little bit at a time, they can't just do it all at once? No, no, they have to do it as a process. And I, I, I would I would help with any 20,000 guys. It might be the stuff that they're working with and so forth, and probably some of the soil down there that's so contaminated. But as, as long as they've been pumping that out now, I doubt there's any 20,000 gallons of oil in the ground. Fred, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, aren't they pumping like mean green into the ground, which washes the stuff, and then as they're pumping it, it allows it to separate and you know, be able to suck it out? What, yeah, what they did originally, I can't tell you over there how they're doing it because I haven't been in that building. But at Richmond, they brought it back, separated the water, and put the water back in the ground. And this is not just oil that's just, you know, as pure as it was. It's mixed in dispersants and it's got dirt and water in it and oh, who knows what. But so when we say maybe there's 20,000 gallons, it's not pure oil that leaked out. It's mixed with everything else. Probably soil and everything else. Yeah, so just so, just so the many people will know, and you'll know, Fred. Um, the complaints about the oil were our complaints, and they're not, they're not, I didn't think, I didn't take it as they were spreading lies or anything. They had concerns, whoever brought it up had, had specific concerns, and DEM responded. You know, I think their concerns should have been brought up years ago when the, uh, the spill first happened about where the wells are, and even the wells at the high school. Yeah. I mean, if it's going the other way, we're going to lose all of our supply. I'll tell you what. Common, the, common sense tells you it's going the opposite way. If it wasn't, it wouldn't have all of our The uh, chart, the last chart, that shows the amount of money that has been spent in the new one. I, uh, no matter what, um, in 2010, they, they did go out to bid finally, because originally it was an emergency, and they treated it as an emergency, and then they just kept having the same person do it. And then they went out to bid, and they hired this GZA, who's actually been able to take out gallons and get it out of the ground. Right. So they're doing a good job, and as you can see, the costs have gone way yeah. down mm -hmm. from 181,000 one year down to 17,000. So that tells you the oil's going. Right. Yeah. 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 I have a question. I think I'm missing something here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wouldn't the foundation of this new Rice School building act as a cap for the, for any oil or any problem we have underneath? The, the building, so what's the, what, where's the complaint here? I mean, you can, you can build it on top of a landfill if you wanted to, as long as the, 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 the base, the foundation of the building acts as a cap. It's not like things are going to leak through concrete, I wouldn't think. Am I, am I, am I wrong here? No, but I don't think you've got any worry about it anyway. It's going to be built right onto the auditorium end of the building. Yeah. It'll be attached there. The only thing that we did do, it won't be accessed for the uh, senior high kids to go over to the middle school. Yeah. It'll be secured off. But to, Foundation, I did talk to the one first question I had. Yeah. What kind of problems are we going to run into underneath there with the soil? Is there any piping in there, any storage in there? We can guarantee that the time that you did was nothing we had to worry about at that right. so, so, so basically, what we're doing, we're putting a cap on top of this oil spill area. Well, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I need to correct that. I'm no, sorry. The oil spill area is the other end. This, oh, this is an 
absolutely nowhere no, no, near no, the oil spill area. So, so where's the complaints? Why, why is it they, complaint? What they're concerned I'm about, the oil spill is in a bubble. Bubble? That's okay. held in that area. Right. Their concern what? is that when you stop disturbing the ground, it may pop that bubble. But, but, but the bubbles, the bubbles here, and the rice bones there. How can you just do something? Just land in water there. It's just a case that I know. That's ridiculous. Speaking with individuals, it's is there concern that they would pop that bubble and there would be? I, I never knew there was a plume, so at least now I know. So, and, 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 yeah. it's not. It's not near where it's not this where the is going to go. Uh, we just built three classrooms right over there. Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. My yeah. assumption is that, you know, this is what people know. know. I know, but it's in the council's court. If somebody says that's a problem, you say, no, it's not. It's just we so, built, we built other classrooms. This is, if, if anything was going to occur, it would have occurred then. Then that's what you're supposed to do as counselors, is say, no, I'm sorry, I don't believe that's the truth. I will look into it, but I don't believe right. that is the that has occurred nor shall it occur. I'm not saying so, I agree with it. I'm just saying that I can explain why what yeah. my I thought that they had asked me when that everybody has a right to their yeah, opinions sir, and comments and they bring up a concern, you've answered it. Right. So Lisa, thank you. Please okay. yes. okay. so, so, I've got another easy question. Well let me let me just I just want to kind of wrap up that last answer. So um, you're asking really great questions about the build the, the foundation. Our next building committee member will actually have our architects present, so mm -hmm. I can I guarantee you I'll ask that question for you and get back to you with the answer. Um, I I think common sense to all of us is well, first of all, they're saying it's not an issue, but yes, the capping theory. Mm -hmm. But I'll actually get like a proper, like juicy a uh, KBA answer for you that I that I couldn't do as well. Okay. Um, but then just to recap, we. Right, with everything on here has the, the engineering or the um, geological degrees to tear this apart. But GZA does, mm -hmm. KBA, the uh, Kessel Blues Associates also is, has a stake in this and being accurate. Ride, vet, um, Assistant Jane Daly, Superintendent Jane Daly, can say we've turned in binders to ride like this thick for the application for this project. They're on this as well. I mean, they have their obligations to vet every piece of information. And the same individuals who are asking the questions, which they're certainly entitled to ask, has asked the same question to each of these groups. And they've received the same answer. Um, so they've definitely done their due diligence. So RIDE has said this is not, this is a non-issue. The state legislation, state legislators were also posed with this question. They found the evidence from DEM to be sufficient and pass the bond. G GZA and Sylvia pointed out are doing a great job. This is this is their profession. This is not an issue. And I have a statement from DEM from this morning, October 17th, saying they're satisfied with GZA's report. I, I mean, that's about, I think, as accurate as we can get. Easy question. Um, <laughs> once it's completed, how many students are going to be utilizing the, the, the Build up the buildings. 55 at this time. And, and what would be the capacity, you know, of the buildings? 100 or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. a high capacity. So ride sets the capacity on yeah. um, the square footage based on usage and based on student use. Yeah. Um, the, it could not exceed 70 students. Mm -hmm. Though I've heard the superintendent and director Garlic say repeatedly to other town councils and, and community members that even 70 is not a comfortable fit yeah. for students that have these particular needs. Yeah. So 70 would be the max, but it's unlikely that the district would put 70 students in the building. I ask that because, of course, the town, towns grow. And this, this town is what it was 20 years ago. Um, so there may be more need for the, the, the classrooms and all that kind of stuff in, in, in the structure at some point 20 years from now or 15 years from now. I'm just wondering if you, if you have that capacity load, if you can, if you can expand it to that. So RISE approved this based on the special use of the needs of these particular students. Because remember, half of this program is for students that have IEPs that have particular disabilities. Sure. Um, in this case, they're clinical mental health disabilities. So that there, are, it, it's not simply having additional space. It's it's more specialized use. Um, like in this case, there's actual clinical offices that are built in um, because of the supports and services the children need based on their IEPs. Yeah, I just I want to make sure that down, down the pipe we all of a sudden we find that we need more space.
because we have, we have a larger population than three towns, and all of a sudden we need we need another classroom or two classrooms or something right. like that. I think right. the public right. would like to know that. Yeah, I think that's a great question. So we're at 55 now. Yeah. Roughly half are students that are in the clinical program. Yeah. Um, the other half are in the alternative okay. program. And there is room to grow based on this. This is about 13,000 uh, 13, students. Okay, that's what I need to know. Okay. Um, so I have been a little bit of my cog. Um, Marie Glass and Ed is as well. They're part of the building committee. So I just want to give them a moment to say something if they'd like. Sure. And then we'll let you know the questions will be on our like to say that I'm so thrilled to be involved in this project and I think it will be such a tremendous accident, you know, addition to our community. Um, it is an acclaimed program throughout the state. The fact that we um, service the students who attend this program in-house, do not have to send them away from their homes or long bus rides, and are able to take care of them here is huge. And I think it, it will only enhance our community to complete this building. So I commend you for your support and thank you very much. And can't wait to see it be built. Thank you. Thank you. I have finished any my apology nine so you put me on the committee, you're gonna get what I'm gonna give you. Appreciate that. We expect nothing else from you. <laughs> <Good to go. laughs> I actually, this is very dear to my heart because I was employed at the Rice School. I was also employed at the alternative school off campus, so I made the transition to campus. And it was a great thing for the kids that I had off campus to be able to go to school at the high school and take classes there or take classes at the um, career and tech school. When I was there, um, one of my Korean or tech students won the national award at the um, in the carpentry program, and so it's a this is a great program, and it really makes me sad when I hear people say that these children don't need to have anything else besides a trailer, which it is. It's just trailers, and I think it's a great thing that you supported it, and I hope that that support continues in my whole town. Committee will submit some names to the school committee. 
That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. There's a member, a student from the RISE building on it, a parent, a student, a parent, um, the director, school community member. You still have your? Oh, yeah, I still got it. Okay, you're going to formally submit to me, right? Yes, I okay. uh, Lisa, uh, uh, I'd like to thank all of you that worked on this in YouTube. Thank you very much. Um, I have been at almost all the meetings um, because I'm very interested in what's going to become with the Rise School and hopefully a new name. Um, I think we've all um, decided that would be a wonderful thing. But I really want to um, thank the Hopkinton committee members. They have been present consistently and effectively throughout the entire process. Of all the towns, you have been there all the time. And it is really, I really want to thank you for that because it's a very big process. It's a very big project. And you have done a great job. I am very proud of Hopkinson's part of this. You've been great. And Fred, I'm so glad you were there too. Lisa, the bond, what's the term of the bond? <coughs> this gets approved. I need to determine once it's approved. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I've heard ten, ten years, um, and then one answer was possibly twenty years, and financially it made sense. Um, you have expertise <coughs> in that area. Yeah, but um, my understanding is that is determined at the time the referendum is passed because they're um, the group that does it puts bonds together across the state for schools to get the best rate, correct, Ms. Daly? Okay. The only thing I, I know Barry had given his presentation, the only thing I want to have you take take away from at least from me anyways, in, in the um, presentation that Barry gave, he didn't you give an estimation of what our mill rate would be if this project goes through without debt service. Yes. He didn't give us any credit for the lease payments. Right. It could be less. Could be less. It well, I, I hope. Less. I guess my, my takeaway to you is, I'd like to get dollar for dollar credit on the new new building for the lease payments. So that right now it's about five cents on the mill rate for us. At next year when the lease is expired, the 192 will be about eight and a half cents. So I'd like to get dollar for dollar credit. Just the takeaway. Okay. Um, so if. If I say Frank wants dollar to dollar credit, that's going to sum it up like so well, for someone else is going to know what that means. The debt service on the lease payments give us credit for, for the. Assistant Superintendent Jane Daly, did you hear that? Anyone okay. Thank you. Great. Yes. All right. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, your whole um, place is about the JK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, next under rule business number two, render a decision on the proposed digital sign ordinance, which is an amendment to code of ordinances, chapter 134, appendix A, zoning, section 27, signs to add a proposed new section entitled digital sign ordinance, which shall also include replacement language for section T, introduced and sponsored by Council of the Palco, heard on September 19th and, excuse me, October 3rd. The ordinance will establish definitions for digital signs, including definitions for light emitting diodes, organic light emitting diodes, monument sign, freestanding sign, static message, and MIT, the unit measurement of luminance. Replacement language for section T will describe and define self illuminated outdoor signs, billboards, and digital media displays, allowing the use of light emitting diodes or organic light emitting diodes for panels. Collectively referred to as in this subsection T as digital signs. Terms and conditions are met and adhered to. Section T will specify, this, will specify where they are allowed, requires digital signs, display only static messages, governs the size of the sign, its brightness, the size of the text or graphic, addresses, display time, and lists the colors that will be allowed in specific zones and colors to be used by specific agencies. All other sections of Chapter 134, Section 27, to remain in full force and effect. The amendment shall take effect immediately upon passage. Barbara, do you have any comments on this? I don't have anything further to say. Okay. Council of Deliberations. Anybody want to start? 
start? I know we've kind of beat this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think I, I want to just say this is at least, you know, prior to this, we, we never had a town-wide ordinance uh, regarding LEDs. Now that we do it, it's, it's just a first pass at it. So this could certainly be tweaked as, as things progress, but I, I, I thank Barbara for, uh, for getting us going and getting it in front of us. So, um, we'll make a, a motion to approve the proposed digital sign ordinance. Oh, second. Motion and second. Uh, any council questions, concerns? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on the new business, set hearing date regarding the proposed town borderline distribution system ordinance in the use sponsored by the city council. Um, now that I think about it, we really don't have time for this council to advertise and then um, render a decision at a later date. The, the timing is off because of the election. Well, that's wrong, November 1, so. yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I'm thinking that we can't actually set, we can set a hearing date for after the election. Mm -hmm. You can do it that way and then the new council will well, have to do this. Do we have enough time to set it prior to or not? It's not as long as I checked with the solicitor this evening. Because it's not an advertised and it's only an ordinance, it needs to be advertised at least once five days before the day of the next regularly scheduled council meeting is November 1. I think. No, November 7th. If Lisa says there's time to do it, we oh, will do it, but I need to know. November 7th. November 7th. The night before. Yeah. Right. And also, I mean, I think it's important. I think what Sylvia is bringing forward is important. And if we hear it as a council, and then the council changes, then what you've done isn't really effective. I would like to see it after the election, because I think it's very important for every person who is on the council after the election to see this in detail and look at it in detail. Yeah, you can't have a hearing and then have the next yeah. council make right. a decision. Oh, no, it right. doesn't exactly. work. Exactly. Right. And not only that, it's important, and I think it we'll needs be, to be addressed. We'll so what would we'll you be suggest? The what would be the day of Sylvia for holding up off on this? Holding off is just because there isn't enough time to do it. No, no, no. I'm saying, is there any problem with holding off? No, not at all. Okay, fine. No, that's fine. Sure. So we can set a hearing date for perhaps the first Second meeting in December? Second, Second meeting. Oh, first meeting in December? That's fine. Yeah, because then they'd, have, they'd get yeah. their packet, they'd look mm -hmm. at it, and we'll have the hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you're thinking maybe December 5th? If, does yeah. that work? Okay. That works. Yeah, that's what the council wants. Okay. <clears throat> All five years. Oh, and by the oh, any changes that I needed to make, just talk to the bill about. I don't need to do that now because it's just seven years. Yeah, it's just seven years. <clears throat> Which was right. just a minor little tweak, no big deal. Okay. All right. Yeah, and then about time to go through the bit. Okay. Last public forum. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.